I'm going to add on a reason now to start the meeting. Uh, so, welcome everybody. This is the design advisory panel meeting for October 12th, 2023, and I am calling the meeting to order. And just a reminder to everyone, the meeting will be live streamed and video recorded for the public. All right, so I don't, I'm not aware of any late items, so uh, to introduce, so we can move on to the agenda. Um, are there any additional items to add to the agenda? No, sounds like uh, the agenda is up to date. Uh, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Kevin? And a seconder is Ken. Right. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, I'm on the room mic, so I might have to just speak a bit louder. Yeah, yeah Jonathan, some, I think the connection's a little bit sketchy a bit at times. You kind of come in and out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, you, you talk you, louder so the room mic picks me up. Okay, so it looks like the adoption of the agenda has passed. Uh, for adoption of minutes, we don't have any minutes to adopt this week, uh, so we can move on from that. Um, so, on to the presentations for today. We have one presentation on the agenda. It's a property on Hammond Bay Road, and Peyton Carter, a city planner, will introduce it. So go ahead, Peyton. Peyton, you're muted. Peyton, you have to turn your sound down, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, sorry, development permit application DP uh, 1317 is for a ground-oriented multifamily uh, residential townhouse development comprising of 15 buildings in 34, um, 34 units, all three bedroom units. The subject property is zoned st steep slope residential R10 and is designated as suburban neighborhood in city plan. The lot is partially located uh, within the Rocky Hood neighborhood and is loca located at the south end of Nay Drive with frontage on Hammond Bay Road. Uh, this property is vacant but slopes upward towards the east side of the lot. There are two large wetlands on the property as well as Wally Creek which bisects the lot. Uh, development is concentrated to the northeast portion of the property. Uh, this uh, property falls within Development Permit Area 1, Environmentally Sensitive Areas, uh, Development Permit Area 5, Wildfire Hazard, Development Permit Area 6, Steep Slopes, and Development Permit Area 8, Forming Character. Height variances are proposed uh, for Buildings 2, 11, 13, 14, and 15 to accommodate some architectural features and um, some speculative grade changes. Uh, the general development permit area guidelines do apply as well as the steep slope development permit area guidelines. Thank you, Chair. I'm open for any questions if you have some. Thank you, Peyton. Um, do any of the panel members have any questions for city staff? I, okay, I don't see any questions, so we can proceed uh, to the presentation. So. The applicant may go ahead with their presentation. Uh, so who will be presenting this evening? Maybe Glenn. All right, so Glenn, you can go ahead and share your, oh, and share your screen, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for your uh, time this evening for us to be able to introduce uh, the uh, forming character and uh, our design for this project at, uh, on Howland Bay Road. Um, thank you, Peyton, for um, providing a, uh, a great introduction for us and, uh, and for also drafting a, um, a great staff report. Um, it's, uh, it's nice and concise, and that's how we want to try and roll out our presentation this evening. So uh, I, will, I will start with a, uh, a screen share. Uh, <clears throat> Sure. Go. 
Okay. Can everybody see the screen okay? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so this is kind of the uh, this is uh, uh, the neighborhood located at uh, 467 Ohaman Bay Road. Um, as Peyton um, mentioned, we're in, uh, we have a couple of development permit areas that we need to deal with, uh, sensitive, environmentally sensitive areas, wildfire fire hazard uh, DP area, and we're in a steep slope um, development permit area. Um, and we have worked hard to try and uh, navigate all of the, uh, the as, as many of the conditions as we possibly can, given the, uh, the topography, given the, uh, the nature of the site. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll kind of get into it here. So a um, little bit about the uh, context and surrounding area. Um, I know most of you are probably familiar or, or have probably driven past the site as part of your preparation for tonight's presentation. But you can see in the uh, aerial uh, view, we've got a, a very odd shaped uh, property, which is accessed off of Hammond Bay Road, down through Vista View, and then connecting through Logan Run. And then at the end of May Drive is the uh, the entry point into the development. Uh, the surrounding neighborhood, as you can see, is largely uh, single family residential, um, very fitting in the uh, in the sort of the suburban suburban neighborhood, uh, which is the new OCP zone for this this area. We've uh, we've kind of um, followed in line with the. Uh, units per hectare density, which we feel is appropriate for steep slope at 16 units a hectare. We've done our best to kind of uh, take advantage of that as best as we can. And uh, and then within that uh, within that zone, our gross floor area is, is actually much lower than uh, what's permitted. So uh, we're, we are acknowledging and limiting our, our density to that 16 units per hectare as, as per the uh, R10 site. Um, some of the other shots just give you a view. This is the current uh, entry point at the end of May Drive. So our development would start here. Uh, this is the other part of the property which fronts onto Hammond Bay Road. Uh, another shot down just down Hammond Bay Road, the kind of the, the, the existing uh, road edge there. And then uh, uh, another shot from uh, looking down May Drive into the parcel which is, is beyond the, uh, the single family homes. Along Logan's Run, you can see how various other developments and uh, residential developments have had to navigate the, uh, the sort of the stepping of the of the site. The uh, the wetland area obviously is a, is the low point between the the bench side of uh, Hammond Bay Road, and then it starts to step back up again as you go further along Vista View Crescent. So we're kind of down in the uh, in the gully. You can see at this along here. This is the uh, the easement or the the line which uh, is Wally Creek, which kind of runs through. Uh, it meet it comes along the back of the Piper's Pub parking lot. There's a boardwalk and various other things that have been built. Uh, it flattens out in this part of the site here, which is part of the riparian area. Wally Creek continues on across, so we've got this bisection of uh, north and south, uh, which we're dealing with. Uh, to the to the east of us is the, uh, the Nanaimo uh, water treatment plant. We've got some larger lots to the north that are still relatively undeveloped, and uh, and not too far away, just on the other side of the hump, is the uh, is the is the water. Uh, so we're we're um, we're integrating as best we can into the existing neighborhood, and um, and just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of the context, the, the sort of the building stock that is in and around us, and. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll kind of continue on to that. So um, this is a site plan. The green area it, that is shaded to the north and shaded to the south are the developable areas that are outside of the riparian setback. So we've got our riparian areas here, and then we have this, the uh, the setback from that riparian area in the red line here, and a red line uh, flanking along the south edge. So we've concentrated. Our development to the the north side, uh, it is a natural access point that road wanted to kind of come through, and and then this is the large wetland area which we're obviously uh, preserving, uh, the creek coming through here, and then I believe there is some other city uh, right of ways that sit on top of that for uh, storm and uh, sewer perhaps. Um, Anyway, the, there's also a uh, there's also a, a, an easement for city uh, services that comes through under here, which we've had to deal with as well. 
Uh, so we've kept our buildings away from those those uh, um, SRWs. We um, a bigger picture for this development is uh, we would like to maybe have a conversation with engineering as we get through the, as we go through this process, process to see if there's any opportunity for us to make a, a connection, either a pedestrian connection or otherwise, so that we can bring um, this development and, and give it some access to uh, to this piece and then um, out on to Hammond Bay Road. We think it might be a nice way to, you know, add another another cut through or another pathway for pedestrians and um, and obviously be able to uh, more conveniently access the the bus services, et cetera. But uh, we didn't want to go too far because we know we've got uh, a number of um, uh, departments within the city that we need to uh, we have extend those conversations onto uh, because we're crossing right of ways and in through sensitive areas. So uh, you can see our our buildings are located. Um, our site design started with uh, you know we've got a we've got a, a kind of a rock or a, a high point here. It drops back down into a low area here. Drops into the low area here and it rises up slightly towards Hammond Bay Road. Um, and so we started with uh, placing our buildings around the, the most practical location for the road, including the road grades. We do have some grades that are um, we had to work around. So uh, we kind of reverse engineered our site, starting with um, how we could place roads to create as least the least amount of impact and cut and fill, et cetera. It's uh, very difficult in these steep sl slope sites to not get into some cut and fill but uh, uh our uh, our civil engineer was uh, did a great job in sort of defining the grades for the roads and then we went in with our unit types um so generally speaking the the site is developing on the north we've got connections and pathways through into significant landscape areas which have been preserved we want to be able to utilize those areas uh, that are outside of the riparian and not being touched by development to uh, to provide that um, as as much natural amenity for the residents that will be uh, living here. So uh, Cam, our landscape architect, will be speaking to that a little bit, and then um, Patrick from Herald Engineering, our civil engineer, will be able to speak a little bit about um, some of the other uh, technical aspects of the of the site and uh, grading and and so on, stormwater management as well. So this gives you a, a, a quick cross section uh, over from Hammond Bay Road. You can see that the site that we, we aren't touching right now slopes down. We get into the wetland uh, zones here. And then our site proper, we've got the, the setback from the wetland. And then this is the setback far on the other side up on Nay Drive. And so uh, this zone here would be that untouched landscape area that we'd like to um, utilize as amenity and you can see the sort of the section of buildings getting notched into the hill to keep them down with a, a patio or a, a deck on the low side with street level up here and then the that's the high street the mid street and then the low street down um, at the bottom so this uh this aerial i think was in the package as well this gives you a, a sort of a um an overview of the, uh, the the arrival point through Hammond Bay Road down uh, Alta Vista into Logan's Run and then around and then into our property where we would come along a low road that comes down to here and then th this turns up we go uphill into the upper road which comes along here which uh, and both both streets are double loaded with unit types that respond to their particular. Uh, grade and how they're how they're intersecting into the ground and, and working with it. Um, a quick uh, quick shot of our unit plans because um, the former character was very much um, inspired by the the unit types and the sort of the the generous plans that we've got going here. We uh, we're really happy to be working on a on a, a sort of a a project that does provide several unit types uh, they are bigger units they're family orientated we've got an option for a three bedroom or even a potential for that to increase into a four bedroom uh, if we want to so that would be one type uh, all of them are three bedrooms um, this just shows a configuration of an end unit or a mid a mid unit um, so there are variations on plans but just wanted to illustrate to you that we've kind of dug deep into understanding how the plans work with the grid in order to generate the form and character. 
this is another one of the bigger ones. Um, and so we've, when it comes to the material palette, we, um, we've kept it fairly muted. We've got sort of dark gray, mid gray and light gray tones, which would be our uh, cement uh, panel or hardy panel or hardy plank. Um, with our four pe 12 pitch roofs, we've got the um, asphalt shingles. And then we, uh, we want to accent everything with the, either a wood look metal panel, which is very durable and, um, and sort of resists the test of time. And then some, uh, some actual uh, wood material with, uh, with a particular stain on it. Um, I think muted warm tone to, uh, to kind of complement the, uh, the gray uh, colors. Our, our balconies would be of uh, sort of black aluminum and, uh, and glass guards. Uh, so kind of trying to keep that visual connection to the surroundings. So with that, with that um, refined palette, we, uh, we started to create our, our streetscapes and our, um, and, uh, and our forming character. So we do have, um, you know, again, Pinton did a, a great job in sort of describing the forming character. And we've, you know, through our, our design rationale, we wanted to create a unique uh, town or little uh, uh, neighborhood within the, uh, the greater uh, Alta Vista Logan Run neighborhood. Uh, so we've got a series of flat roofs and uh, pitched roofs. The, the pitched roofs create uh, covered private balconies and decks uh, that become become the feature accent on the buildings and uh, with garage doors being kind of slightly pushed back and left as a secondary uh, feature. Uh, we, we also wanted to uh, express front doors. That's where we introduced the, uh, the wood materials and, uh, and, and so on. So um, just wanted to start with a couple of, of views. Uh, view four is actually a view. This is looking into the property. So this would be, um, at uh, Atne Drive, on the right-hand side would be where the playground is, and then we're sort of looking into the entry of the uh, of the development. Uh, this view, view five, my notes. This is basically looking back out towards as if you were exiting out of um, the development. The two the two streets are behind you. The single street, which is the primary entry and exit, turns around the corner. Uh, view six is this is a view from the very the, the high road looking down uh, the hill and uh, this view is from the low road next to the riparian area and these are the the taller townhouses we um, um, these are the ones that we are asking for a little bit more of a, a variance on so that we can achieve a rooftop uh, amenity for uh, people living in these ones uh, that variance would include the extra staircase uh, enclosure that would be required in some pergola. So, so these are the, the these are kind of the this is the form and character generally speaking using the same materials, uh, changing uh, the form and character of this one is a little bit more modern, uh, a little bit more compressed. But again, it offers that uh, different unit type, but within that family size at three bedrooms. Uh, this is uh, view eight, which is basically on the entry road. Um, before you would either go up the hill or you would go down the hill. And then this is the corridor of replanting that we're hoping to achieve between the, uh, the two units. This is the townhouses on the, on the low side and then the, the bigger single family duplex fourplexes on the, on the left hand side. And this corridor in between uh, introducing that landscape buffer, which um, uh, Cam can speak to a little bit as well. Uh, oh. So, looks like our uh, our elevations have died. Okay, just give me one second, please. It's always good to bring it back up to these things, isn't it? Okay, so um, you guys still see this okay? Okay, great. Um, sorry for that. The, um, we have uh, a lot of buildings, so um, I'm gonna go through the elevations pretty quickly because I know you have this package. Um, I just wanted to um, 
touch on a couple of the variances, you'll see this is building one. Uh, we've been able to achieve um, the entire building without requesting a variance. Building two, as an example, uh, the roof pitches come very close to the, uh, the maximum height. Uh, what we find when we go through construction is when we get to within six inches or even 12 inches of maximum height, uh, often it's better to ask for a little bit of a relaxation or a variance so that we can, um, through site conditions, buildings can move up and down a couple of inches. So uh, th this variance is, uh, is quite minimal. Um, I'll go through the rest of the buildings. Three, uh, no variances. You can see the sort of the variation in materials, the light gray and dark. And then our wood accents where we have gable ends, we wanted to play with the materials and uh we're, you know break up the form and character with uh, wood accents and uh, playing with the with the panel type generally our units on the back side turn into two stories on the front side they they look like single story uh, units um and that varies slightly as we go from building to building uh building four building five are quite similar just their uh, placement on the site is what creates a little bit of variation same with uh six, seven, eight, and, and then uh, building nine and 10, we got the same idea where, you know, front and the rear or front and rear turns in as they go downhill, uphill. Uh, and, uh, and building 11 and 12, same thing. So it's when we get into the buildings through 13 and 15, uh, this is where the unit type changes a little bit. Uh, you can see here the maximum height, um, um, what we're asking for is a, uh, a sort of more of a significant variance in order for us to kind of bring the staircase up uh, the extra height. Uh, those uh, those variances, I think I mentioned um, in our in my um, rationale. So building 11, uh, sorry, sorry, 13, 14 and 15. We're asking the variance ends up being around about 3.9 meters, and that would be from the max height all the way up to the stairwell. Um, but the but in realist in in real terms, it's it's still remaining a two-story or three-story building. So uh, um, I, I'm well, I I can go through that a little bit more in detail. I just want to offer some more time for everybody else to uh, to kind of speak. So uh, with that said, I'll let uh, Cam take over. I will. Uh, Cam, just let me know when you want me to flick through the slides, and we can go through your uh, your landscape uh, design. Perfect. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, Glenn. Yeah, and thank you everyone for um, having us for this presentation. Um, so yes, on the screen you can see the overall landscape plan. Um, as Glenn has mentioned, and and uh, Peyton mentioned, this site is very complicated in terms of grading. Um, it's really been a grading exercise, but there was very considered placement of the buildings and the roads, um, and consequently of the retaining and landscape elements surrounding those. Um, you can see from here that we have uh, some key areas of the site, um, namely right near the entry at Ney Road is the outdoor amenity space, which includes children's play, seating areas, mailboxes, and, and um, visitor bike parking. Um, we have included in this area as sort of the community hub, um, some key elements there um, to bring the community together. Um, it's also close to sort of the neighboring area as well, so that we, you know, can invite others in to that uh, great outdoor play space. Um, there's also a connection to what we're calling a nature trail, a proposed trail that goes across the dry aisle and up in between the buildings and up and over that knoll that was mentioned and then down into that sort of existing landscape area to try and take advantage of the amazing existing retained spaces that we still have on this site. This is very um, irregular. <laughs> we don't often get sites where we're allowed to have this much retained uh, landscape, existing landscape retained. So it's, it's quite an opportunity to have people be able to explore in that space. Um, in order to do that, we have a crushed gravel path that will try and be as minimal as possible to the environment. Um, we've provided low level lighting in the form of bollard lighting and uh, destination, of course, you always wanna have somewhere to go and some reason to go there. Um, sort of at that Northeast corner, we're providing a circular seating plaza nestled amongst some significant trees. 
um, with some seating opportunities as well. And that's all with permeable paving to try and again minimize that, that environmental disturbance. Um, the residential landscape throughout the site is predominantly pedestrian scaled. Uh, we have maximized our retaining walls at 1.2 meters in height. And that's why you see those sort of red terraces everywhere to try and allow opportunities to screen those walls um, and provide a much more gradual transition from the roadways and the buildings to um, other parts of the site and uh, bring down the scale between buildings as well. Um, we're using uh, 42 inch height wood picket fences surrounding all of the units to provide enclosed front yards, um, predominantly the front in the back, um, unless except for building six, we don't really have separated fencing. It's just kind of open to the existing landscape, uh, which is pre pretty much retained in most of those situations. Uh, we are using predominantly native and drought tolerant ornamental and adapted plant material. Um, the intent again is to minimize disturbance and sort of add to the natural landscape that is prevalent throughout and around the site. Um, again, we're using permeable paving in the visitor parking stalls and the pathway um, and the plaza. And we are also um, using sort of wayfinding trees, as you can see along the street frontages and at each at the front of every unit. We're using a ginkgo biloba autumn gold, which is um, considered to be um, in the Metro Vancouver's climate change documents for urban trees, one of the most um, acceptable species for the future for climate change. So we're trying to also think ahead, you know, not just using native plants, but things that are going to be better adapted to what the, the native climate will be in the future and not too distant future. Um, so uh, you can flip the slide here, please, Gwen. So we've just provided a, an enlargement of the amenity plan here. Again, um, we're having a combination of sort of natural clay elements of boulders and logs with a more traditional significant um, play element. Uh, it's a fairly substantial space. It's, it's a generous space uh, that provides us opportunities to have a, a significant play feature um, with some peripheral natural landscape elements along the perimeter. We've also included um, edible planting around the edges, which you'll see in a later slide showing the actual plant materials for the kids to do berry picking, you know, explore the natural environment. Again, mostly native except for some regular old blueberries, which do quite well in uh, Vancouver Island. So um, you can flip to the next slide. This is just, again, a blow up of that nat natural trail play area um, amenity space. And again, we kind of tried to work with the existing trees that are in there, but it would really be a field fit situation with the project arborist on site to make sure that we're protecting and going around the trees that need to be protected uh, which is all of them, but in the best way possible and working with the grades. So we've kind of worked with the grades to make it as accessible as possible. Um, we are not able to get it down to below 5%, but it is intended to be a nature trail. Um, so wherever possible, if we need to, um, in that one location between 35 and 34 there, the, the contours you can see, um, that is about a 10% slope. So, you know, we, we may introduce some some timber stairs or something like that to help navigate. But the entrance to this is, is through a set of stairs across the street from the main amenity anyway. So um, this is definitely uh, a hilly site. So we're challenged with what we can do. Um, the, we, we are going to include removal of invasive species throughout this sort of natural area to try and again, help regenerate the, the native landscape in this location. Um, next slide, please. We're showing here some sections, um, as you can tell by the landscape plan and, and the speaking that's been done so far. It's a very hilly site. Um, in order to try and have usable spaces, we've really worked hard to grade it so that there's ample spaces between these terraced retaining walls to provide screening to the wall um, and plenty of tree uh, and plant material within and between those walls. So there's just three examples um, throughout the site. Next slide is just, again, some more sections showing the, how the walls are intended to work, again, with generous spacing between the walls um, to have that gradual transition between parts of the site. Next slide, please. 
So this is just uh, the landscape materials palette. Um, we're showing the species of trees that we're proposing and the species of shrubs, ground covers, and perennials as well. Again, predominantly native, um, except for some species that are listed as most preferable um, due to climate change. Um, again, some species that use edible plantings around the amenity space for children and some drought tolerant ornamental grasses. Next slide, please. So here is just a blow up of the actual planting plan around the amenity space to show you um, how we're intending that to look. Um, as you can see, there's quite a bit of planting. Um, the, I, I won't really go into the specifics of the species, but we're using evergreen um, huckleberries, uh, blueberries, um, red currant, uh, strawberries, many, many flowering plants uh, as well to kind of add to that interest and, and play value around the perimeter of that site. Uh, next slide, please. And this is to show the sort of more standard, typical residential planting strategy that we're employing. Um, generally, what we're looking looking at is separating, keeping an orderly frame around the, the drive aisle with a one meter swath of either low evergreen planting or ground cover grasses, um, and then having a, a sort of outwardly facing strip of planting in front of the 42 inch height or yeah, 42 inch height uh, wood picket fencing, and then some generous planting on the inside as well. Uh, again, utilizing the native plant material as much as we possibly can and providing screening and separation between those private spaces and private yards. And next slide. And this is the final slide. It just is a little bit of a detail sheet showing some of the play equipment, uh, site furnishings, the idea of the terracing in the retaining walls and our overall plant schedules with uh, quantities and species and sizing of planting for everyone, which is also in the packages that you have. So we'll go all the way through it. And that, uh, that concludes the landscape portion. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you to, to kind of Glenn and Cam for kind of teeing this up. And I just want to echo that uh, this is a, a bit of a, a unique project and it's been a privilege to be involved in it because uh, as Glenn said, uh, a lot of the front end work was based around grading and and uh, drainage and, and some of the considerations that we get more involved in um, versus it being the reverse <clears throat> um, where we, <clears throat> excuse me, where we have to work around that and, and quite often it can be more challenging. So just wanted to echo that. Um, this is our, our cover page. It, it does kind of show the, the main portions of, of the site. As Glenn alluded to, there's a portion of the frontage on Hammond Bay Road that is not being developed. Um, we're essentially taking access and servicing um, completely off of, of May Drive. Um, kind of east-west, there is a, a portion of the Nanaimo, um, uh, basically the, it's the it's the sewage control station, or Nanaimo, Greater Nanaimo Pollution Control Center, I guess, which is uh, east of the site. So there is a kind of a sewage trunk main that kind of runs parallel with Wallaby Creek, kind of east-west, as well as north uh, between Nay Drive and that same alignment, there's an existing sanitary sewer there. So we did have to kind of work around that a little bit with some of the grades and even adjusting a portion of the sewer. Um, but Glenn, if you don't mind going to CO2, I can just give a high level of the, the servicing. Just the next drawing, please. I can I can screen share if uh, if you don't oh yeah you've got a copy of it okay <clears throat> okay so this is pretty uh, pretty well color coded uh, water is pretty straightforward it's extended off of an existing connection on Nay Drive uh, dead ends on both the upper and lower roads uh, sewer is the kind of uh, kind of salmony color uh, basically it, it's it's fairly conventional it runs underneath the roadway it's all gravity based it connects into the um, Kind of the replaced sewer that I just mentioned within, which then outfalls that are, uh, <clears throat> sorry, outlets into the, uh, the truck sewer. And storm is green. So again, fairly conventional um, with each lot having a service connection and being able to, to go into a, a storm sewer that's kind of underneath the roadway. Um, there's 
opportunities that that Cam and I um, have kind of been discussing about opportunities for for kind of some softer drainage for potentially roof leaders and things like that, depending on where the buildings um, are located. So those are certainly going to be uh, explored as much as possible at at detail design. Uh, but one of the features of this one is um, if you can zoom into the, the playground area, please, Glenn. Because the playground area is essentially one of the low areas of, of the developed site, um, we're kind of piggybacking on the uh, real estate there for a playground, and we'll be using that for some of our stormwater management. So the ground, and, and I guess coincidentally in that area, the ground is actually quite uh, permeable according to geotechnical test bits. So given that that area is, uh, I'll call it non-structural from a building point of view, and we have the real estate in which to do that, um, we're able to, to meet the city's kind of stormwater management requirements through that way, as well as utilize an existing uh, storm sewer outlet, which already goes to the wetland. And so the, the impact on the wetland is, is actually very, very minimal um, in terms of a, a servicing perspective. So that's that's kind of about it. I mean, the, the developed area is, uh, like I said, kind of a fraction of the overall site. Um, you know, I think I, I can kind of echo Glenn's comments in terms of the road A, road B profiles being, um, certainly they were considered from an emergency access point of view. Um, you know, they're no, no steeper than kind of normal uh, municipal roadways would be. And, uh, and servicing is, is fairly straightforward, except for the kind of advantage of being able to double up on the, the playground area and the stormwater management feature area. Um, that's probably about it, Glenn. That's great. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Patrick. So um, um, we'll, uh, we'll turn it over to you guys for questions or anything that uh, any clarification or anything else that you would like us to answer. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so now we'll continue on to doing a little round table with our panel and they may ask the applicant questions or share their comments about the proposed development. So uh, Kevin, would you like to start off uh, with your comments? Sure, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thanks Glenn and uh, Cam and Patrick for your presentation. Uh, very nice project, obviously not the easiest of, of sites, but um, uh, very well done. I, I really don't have really any issues at all with the project. I think the way you've uh, cited the project, the, the siting layout uh, works very well, especially with the constraints you have to work within. I really, really like the form and character of the buildings. and. Uh, uh, and I support uh, the height variance uh, that you're you're asking for. I think, uh, especially under the circumstance, uh, even though you might be asking for a fairly uh, extreme height restriction for uh, some of the buildings, uh, they're not going to be vi visually seen. So I have no issues with that. Um, did you look at? It? I think most of my questions are for for Cam. <clears throat> the uh, the main drive aisles, uh, there's really no pedestrian connection. Uh, did you look at any sort of uh, methods to change texture uh, to the hardscape to create pathways uh, to connect the units? Yes, yeah, and that was something that we've received comments on from the city as well to um, really connect, especially at that amenity space of connecting across the drive aisle, um, as well as around those visitor parking stalls where people will be going from, you know, possibly one side to the other. Um, there's also discussions, as Glenn mentioned, about providing that sort of secondary access through the site down to Hammond Bay Road. So that will really dictate also where we need to provide those secondary crossings. And I think having them be raised and connected across the drive aisle to give pedestrian priority is, is number one, for sure. Yeah. And obviously, for me, the um... Uh, on the drive aisles uh, to provide uh, pedestrian uh, circulation throughout the roads uh, system as well. Um, uh, yeah, obviously it would be uh, beneficial, I think. I think hopefully you can work with the engineering department to uh, create uh, a pathway from from the site to Hamilton Bay Road. Uh, whether you do it or not, it's gonna it's going to happen over time. 
<laughs> I think we all know that. <clears throat> and the only other thing is uh, whether or not there will be some sort of uh, uh, connection to the uh, the trailway as well. Uh, a lot of the people uh, that are going to be living in building 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, or especially building 12, uh, would probably want to find ways to get to that trailway without having to go all the way around to uh, Nay Drive to get there. Um, so, th and that's to the, the trailway on the north uh, east corner. Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure that it's such a steep area through there. Uh, I, I'm not going to recommend that you provide some sort of pedestrian link to the trailway from, I, I guess you would call it road, uh, road B uh, to get up through there. But uh, I just think for a lot of people that want to use that, it might be a little bit difficult for them to uh, uh, circulate back through the site uh, to almost an A drive then come along through the site. So it's one of those things that I, there's really no solution to it. But uh, I just wanted to point that out that uh, uh, most of the people living in building six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 will probably automatically create their own little pathways uh, to the, that trailway. Um, so Again, it's it just something that I'm throwing out there, but it, it, there's really no solution to it. Um, other than that, um, uh, Cam, did you, uh, for site lighting, is is it going to be strictly bollard lighting or are there going to be uh, uh, tall light stands as well? At this point, we are proposing bollard lights as sort of low level lighting. Um, I'm not totally clear from a civil perspective if there will be street lights along the drive aisles or not. Um, but, but from a landscape lighting perspective, we are proposing bollard lights along pathways and around the amenity space and step lights on all of the, the stair locations as well. Okay, um, that's good. Um, the only other thing that I would say is on your 3D drawing, I think you're calling it, uh, Glenn, you're calling it view eight. Um, it looks from the main road aisle uh, towards building 13. Yes, that one. Um, uh, that is sort of like a, a major feature, in, in my opinion. And uh, 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 initially, I looked at the form and character of Building 13 and ways that uh, maybe there were, were possibilities of ways to enhance that facade. But uh, after I looked at it further and, and looked at the floor plans, I, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with the form and character. I think uh, uh, Cam might have the opportunity to do something uh, with landscape features there, uh, even a, a gazebo or something like that, or maybe just the tree species to, uh, I think you're calling for a, a Serbian spruce there, Cam, is that right? Yeah, it's a collection, there's three right at that sort of yeah. main focal yeah. point. There's a collection of three there. Yeah, the, the yeah, rendering and, isn't exactly to the <laughs> to the lens. Yeah, and but even still, a Serbian spruce is is a fairly small tree, and uh, maybe something uh, just a little bit more of a feature there because that's pretty pretty much a very visual uh, component for everybody uh, on the on the two other roads that drive in. They're going to see see that. So I would just recommend maybe that you look at uh, something there at that corner uh, to enhance it a bit. Uh, I think through uh, landscape features uh, would be the best way and act, because I really like the form and character of that facade, even though there's no, there's just that strip of windows there. Um, I wouldn't really want anything changed personally uh, with the form and character of that building. So uh, other than that and the uh, pedestrian links throughout the site, um, I really like the project and uh, uh, well done. So thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Uh, so next, uh, Ken, would you like to share your comments? Thank you, uh, Chairman, and uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, overall, I thought the form and characters uh, really fitted well within uh, the site and I really want to commend the architects for and landscape people for uh, the design 
and uh, how it really, how they really managed to take uh, advantage of uh, the high ground and uh, do a pretty nice development. Um, I also like your uh, uh, presentation. It's certainly uh, well documented, and I could understand even the landscaping, even though I'm not a landscaper. And I like your the way you've uh, developed the cross sections and the retaining walls. I think th those are really going to be uh, once uh, the vegetation is grown, it's really going to really look nice. And overall, I think the uh, um, the development's going to be uh, really in that area. I think. Uh, Really nice. It's. Uh, I have no problem with the variances. I think, as Kevin said, you're well away from any uh, blocking anyone's view, and and I think within uh, the whole site, the the high, the high buildings and the roof decks are really going to be uh, certainly someone uh, wanting to uh, have a view of. I'm sure you can have a view of the water from that point. It'd be really nice for the roof decks. Um, I you know the staff had a comment about uh, a pedestrian walkway on, along the road, but to me, your uh, perspectives that you've done uh, with uh, the way you've developed it, I don't know whether you want to uh, put in a sidewalk along uh, on one side or the other. Uh, I think it would make the roads narrower and, and snow clearing and that becomes a problem. I, I walked down the north end of Uplands, and that's a very major road. And at the north end, there are no sidewalks on either side. So if you, a busy street like that has no sidewalks. I'm sure that a, a strata like this with uh, its private driveways, almost uh, the traffic is minimal. And certainly uh, people who are in, driving in here are going to be under uh, 15 kilometers an hour or the most. Um, so all, all in all, I think, uh, I would recommend this project and, uh, with no, uh, additional, uh, um, uh, recommendations for anything, improvements. I think you've, you've done a really terrific job with what you had. Well, that's my comments, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Jason, would you like to share your comments? Yeah, gladly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I agree with uh, my my colleagues that I think you've done an excellent job with the project. I think um, uh, the form and character is quite nice and, and appropriate. Uh, I appreciate the, the thoughtfulness that's gone into the layout uh, of, of um, the entire development and preserving as much of the natural uh, space as, as possible, even though in some cases you were, you didn't have, really have a choice with the wetlands. Um, but the, the way you worked around it was quite nice. Uh, I also appreciate that um, you know the the size of the units accommodating three bedrooms and uh, for families in the area I think is is also a, um, really great. Um, I, I uh, take it on 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 good faith that the the fire truck turning radius for for or not for the radius but the, the backup distance on road a is is appropriate because um, i see that you had the the turning radius on b um uh the, the only other comments i really had were some around some of the distribution of of the amenities on the site um it'd be nice i see that you have a visitor parking at the end of a and b but it might be nice to have some um, additional parking especially as, as the others have pointed out there's no sidewalks um, to for for clear and safe uh, pedestrian movement on the roadways themselves, as Kevin was alluding to, I think if you if you instead of widening the the roads to accommodate uh, an additional walking surface, if the edges had a, a different paving surface or something that just made people aware that that was the intended use for for pedestrians, um, that might be nice. Um, also, I was looking at the amenity, and I understand that it's it's located at the entrance to the development and can be more easily accessible by the neighbors there, and it's um, you know right where people can stop and on their way in to pick up mail and things like that. But I'm I'm wondering if if um, the, my only concern there is that it's in a location where there's not a lot of visibility or eyes in terms of security for the children. So I'm wondering if there might be a better location for it. I understand that the topography might make that um, 
uh, difficult, um, but um, just a, a, a thought on my end. Uh, I also had a similar comment as well to Kevin around that end elevation uh, as you're coming down the main roadway before it splits. I don't. Uh, I agree. I don't think there's an architectural modification required. Um, it's more, you know, if, if there were larger species of trees that could be uh, planted there to receive you coming into the the complex, I think that might be quite nice. Uh, and then. Uh, otherwise, I also support the variances. Um, looking at it, the, the three point, you know, something meters seems pretty excessive. But when you look at the, your drawings, uh, it's really less than a, a meter uh, variance that you will be perceived, and it's really the setback for the, uh, the or the the stairs that are set way back. Um, so you won't experience a three point something uh, 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 variance in height there. So I I support the variances as well. Otherwise, um, thank you very much. I think this is a great project and will be a great um, addition to the neighborhood. All right, thank you, Jason. And Hillary, would you like to share your comments? Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you uh, to the proponents for the presentation. Uh, super interesting to see how you have uh, done what you could with this site given how constrained it is with the wetland and and the creek and so i think you've done really what the only thing you can can do and kind of shoehorn it into that that center bit um i think it looks beautiful um i like the landscape plan uh it looks like you're planting a lot so i think that's um that's really nice to see uh because of the large swath of habitat that is being taken out by this development, but, you know, this is an area that's slated for it. So um, with growth, that's just part of it. Uh, I think that, yeah, the variances make sense to me. Um, and is the, the playground um, is sort of unique in that it's like the lowest point or the, I guess I was just wondering about the top topography for um, building two as well. Um, do you think that the stormwater management in just being in that playground area is enough to deal with the um, with the grade and the amount of of potential like stormwater runoff from the whole project? I guess that's a question that I, that I have. I'm not sure. Is it is it best for everyone to run through their comments? Is there an opportunity to answer, or, or would you like that kind of more on the fly? You're okay with it on the fly. Uh, I should have really asked it early. Yeah, that's okay. So what we do have, and maybe I didn't highlight that, is that um, so that I believe. I mean, I don't. Uh, it's, it's a little tough to see, obviously, right here with all the contours and whatnot. But the intention is that um, not only with the stormwater. Um, I guess, re uh, retention slash detention feature being underneath the playground, there is an overland uh, overflow as well to the wetland. So, which is set, would, which would be set lower than, than building two. So I just, I'm wondering, almost wondering if it's worth pulling up um, Cam's grading plan there, but there is a, you know, right now that, that kind of rectangular proposed six meter SRW, that's the existing outlet to the wetland. Um, that's in and around where, um, without having the profile in front of me, I believe that's in and around where kind of like the lowest area of the site is. So where we got those green, small green arrows, the intent there is to have a kind of an overflow through the, the riparian area, just with some kind of minor grading. So it, with the intent, uh, you know, kind of protecting building two from that, giving it a, a way to the, to the riparian or to the wetland area before it would, you know, for instance, pond or back up to the building two area. Okay, and in that, um, so you've got like the green shaded area where the playground is. You're not um, disturbing that that riparian area, um, so you won't have to add anything, any plantings in that area. Correct. I think the intent was to um, have a kind of a low impact overflow kind of towards that area, um, and then provide an elevation buffer between what what building two would be versus what that uh, what that overflow channel would be. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, I appreciate I appreciate that. Um, yeah, otherwise, I, I think it, it looks nice. And I, I recognize the desire to have some um, pedestrian 
sort of allocation along along that street. So I think the idea around the, a different kind of paving along one edge or something like that could could be a good idea. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it it looks like you you've done a, a nice job given the constraints and appreciate staff comments on this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. Um, so I will add my comments in now. Um, yeah, I agree that for the site design staff comment about uh, sidewalks along the roadway. Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with the discussion that's been taking place and maybe uh, one a solution could be just a different paving material on the edge of the road to indicate a pedestrian route. Um, for the landscape design, uh, just looking at some of the site furnishings, uh, just one thing I noticed in the playground, the uh, bike rack, uh, just that particular style of bike rack, anyway, I, I would recommend considering that one that's a bit more flexible to different types and sizes of bikes, um, you know, with increase in e-bikes, especially on the hilly side, or since it's out of playground, there could be parents riding there with a bike trailer or something. Um, there are some other bike rack, bike parking configurations that can give a bit more flexibility to different types of bikes. So, um, yeah, just recommend uh, considering a different style of bike rack. Um, the retaining walls, there's a staff comment about um, cascading, considering adding cascading vegetation to conceal the walls. Um, I think uh, throughout the site, the retaining walls are, they're, since they're terraced, they're, they're not too too high, so I think the tallest one is 1.2 meters, so, uh, and a lot of them have plant material in front, planted in front of the wall, which helps conceal it, so I think there's just a few locations where uh, there's no planting in front of the wall, maybe along like a walkway or something. So in those instances, having some cascading vegetation over the wall might help. Uh, for, for most of the walls, I think uh, the way the planting's done now does a good job of uh, softening the wall a bit in the landscape. I uh, just had a question for, uh, this could be to the, to the landscape architect about the playground. There is a retaining wall kind of at one edge. I'm just wondering, is the playground at, like, I, I'm not just not familiar with the grading. Is the playground at the bottom of the wall or uh, at the top of that wall? It's at the top of the wall, but it's a it's a small, small wall. Okay. Just to sort of step down slightly. Yeah, okay. No, yeah, not, not even a foot, so. Okay, yeah. As if it was a bit taller, maybe like a guardrail would be a good idea yeah. since there's yeah. kids playing around there. But um, okay, for plant material, uh, yeah, overall the species selection all looks good. Uh, so stuff that I've seen uh, in in the region used elsewhere and has done well. So I think it's a pretty good selection of plant material. A lot of four season interest. Uh, so. That was well done, um, and I appreciate the uh, having the photos of the plant species is very helpful, as well as the elevation drawings of the fencing and wall retaining walls is all very helpful to us as evaluators. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, the fencing design, the wood picket fencing and height looks good to me. Uh, lighting, a comment uh, for the pathway lighting. I'm a bit uh, a bit on the fence about the lighting in the sort of nature pathway area, just because since it's more of a natural area, lighting could be a bit disruptive uh, to any wildlife in that area. So yeah, I guess if there is light bollard lighting in there, uh, consider putting it on a timer so it's turns off in the later hours of the night so that uh, there is darkness in there for wildlife or uh, yeah, you'll have to see the site conditions. Putting the, all the electrical conduit in there could potentially be more disruptive to that natural area than necessary. So, yeah, I guess just 
consider those things in your lighting design on the pathway. Um, yeah, the paving material all looks good. Mix of pavers, permeable pavers, and the gravel pathway with the concrete edge all seem well thought out to me. Um, so, and yeah, all the, the building variances look good to me. The whole development kind of seems like it's surrounded by mature trees and vegetation, so uh, the development is pretty, seems pretty well screened from the surrounding area, so I don't have any issues with those variances. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess it's time to formulate our recommendation. Um, and yeah, so I haven't heard any objections to the variances, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, I think everyone seemed good with those variances. So for our recommendations, I think sounds like we'd like to make a recommendation about the uh, pedestrian circulation through the roadways and uh, finding a way to delineate that from the vehicle traffic. So yeah, I guess a way to work that would be consider um, a different paving material or way to uh, demarcate the pedestrian circulation along the roadway. Does that sound good to everyone? Um, we could make a recommendation about the landscape feature at that road intersection. Um, uh, Kevin, did you have a way you wanted to word that? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I would say to uh, that we would like the app applicant to consider a landscape feature at the corner of Road A and Road B uh, adjoining Building 13. Okay. Is that is that Jason? Is that what you were thinking as well? Yeah, I I agree. I think that sounds good. Okay, and uh, Jason, do you want to uh, would you want to make a recommendation about the visitor parking distribution? Is there? Uh, I guess consider. Is that something you wanted to do as a, a recommendation? No, or just a... no I, I, I know. I, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I don't think that needs to be a recommendation. I think it just um, wanted to make sure I, I brought it up as part of my commentary on the, the approach. Okay. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll make a recommendation just around the bike rack. So consider. A, a bike parking configuration that can accommodate a wider variety of bike sizes and types. And uh, I think most of the other comments were more just comments. Uh, did, did I miss any, uh, just a question to the panel, did I miss any other recommendations you'd like to make? All right. So, um, I'd like to uh, get, would someone like to make a motion to accept the application as presented with those uh, recommendations we just noted and a motion to approve the variances as well? Uh, looks like Kevin and the seconder, we can. Uh, so all in favor? All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you to the applicant for uh, coming in to do a presentation on your development. Um, yeah, it looks like an exciting opportunity for more housing in Nanaimo and it uh, looks very well thought out and designed. So good luck with the rest of your project. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, much. Thank you to the design panel. We really appreciate your comments and uh, look forward to seeing this project move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, take care. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, so I don't think we have any other business today. So uh, can I have a panel member make a motion to adjourn the meeting?
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jason, and second to be Ken. All in favor? Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. Well done, Jonathan. Great yeah, job, job to share. <laughs> I nailed thank it. You.